Hi again. Hello. It's a Saturday and then the remote is officially over. And now I thought it would be fun to do something other than writing, but still a little bit creative. Um, a little bit. Because I have a whole big folder lying over here. I'll grab it in a moment uh, with stuff that I made during different art classes. And I thought it might be fun to show that. I hope that the camera is set up at a correct angle that I can actually hold it up for you. Because of course, as soon as I stand up, you'll not see my head anymore which might be good, but uh, I don't know if we'll also be able to see the art, but we'll see uh, what we can manage. So these are things that I made during various different art classes where basically we had like um, events where a model would show up and we would draw them. And then later we would take those images and make copies of them and like put like different uh, colored paint on it. If you wanted to do that, we're putting under printing presses, whatever, any type of technique you wanted to perform, you can do that and then hopefully get a fun result. And that is what the entire folder that I'm about to show you is full of. And I'm not actually, I haven't sold anything. Well, once there was somebody who was interested in a particular uh, image. And then when I uh, asked around what I should ask for price and a couple of different teachers like quoted something like, oh, maybe we should do this, maybe we should do that. And their prices were already pretty high. I made my price a little lower than that, like half of what the teacher said I should ask for it. And then the people who were so super interested in that one print were like, nah, never mind. So that never sold. I did actually lose one, but of course that one's no longer in my collection. There was a drawing that I made of a dog sitting next to a naked woman with her hair hanging in front of her face because we had like this um, assignment where we had to copy pictures of dogs into our work. And then I combined that with one of the models that I drawn and that was actually pretty good. I'm pretty sure I still have a picture of that. I'll put that on the screen somewhere so you can see that. But that one's missing after an art expedition at that same school. And I emailed around if people could like, maybe look for it in their archives or something, but never, uh, I never really got an answer to that. So that one's lost. And if somebody ever sees that somewhere, uh, make sure to let them know that that is stolen because that is mine and I never got paid for that. But okay, let's go take a look at what I've got, what I still have. And for that, I'm going to have to tuck the phone into the back pocket. Otherwise, I keep having to hold it. So this is the thing that contains it all. I have to grab it somehow that I can have both sides in my hand. Yep. Okay, that doesn't really work. Okay, here we go. Can you see that? It is quite the large thing. So I'm going to put that off screen. I don't want to hold that the entire time. You can wrap your fish. All right, the first thing that I got here is actually just a copy paper. Got a couple of different things. This is like a rice paper type. It's really thin. You can kind of see the hand behind it. That was used to copy stuff from one uh, modeling a sheet to another. As you can see, there's this woman on here. This is basically the kind of style that I usually draw faces in, well, with those eyes. That kind of look like they're a little bit high. So I had different types of these as well with some uh, tattoo type art on it as well that I used for another drawing. Put that over here. Let's see what we've got. So that was also the technique that we would use. We would draw something and then copy it onto another piece of work. So we're going to see her again a couple of times, I believe, in different forms. Now, of course, there was naked modeling involved. Look. Basically, this is like, uh, this is actually, the, can you see that? Maybe be able to see that very vaguely. This is just a pencil drawing that I did in several, but this is the shape of the person that was on the dog uh, print that I lost. So we got her at least still. So she was just kind of sitting there with her head covered in here. Um, it is a drawing, so I don't know if YouTube's going to have a problem with that, but there you go. This is another modeling thing that we did a while back. They're not super good, but it's just a quick modeling drawing. And very occasionally would have a male model, look, like this guy. He was just holding like a, a bar of some sort, so we made that in sort of like a little spear thing. Didn't really do much with this one. You don't see him very often. Some others we'll see repeatedly. And sometimes you try to combine them. Can you see that? There's like two people sitting there. They were not together when they were being models. They're just kind of sitting there on these chairs. So we had like about once every five to 10 sessions, we would have a model showing up. But this one's just a headless person over here. Don't worry about the uh, nudity. They always had no clothes on because that would make it easier to draw the shapes and stuff like that. 
and then over here. This was actually an assignment to make things very uh, 3D, so that's why I did like a lot of shadowing work with this one in particular. Did like extra line work to make it sure that, or at least show the shapes. That's basically the idea here. Like you can see that I'm going around the leg, etc. These look like Madonna boobs, so we're just going to ignore that. She didn't actually have them that looked like that. Okay, let's see who we have here. This one's a copy of a print because I can see that because it's very light. There you go. She's just kind of chilling there in her chair. These are all very incomplete. I stopped doing it after I think three years or something because I moved. No, I didn't move actually, not yet. I hadn't moved yet at that point, but I just kind of lost interest, I think. I was just kind of done. Okay, so here is an idea where I combined a whole bunch of different people. It's very difficult to see, I imagine. Also put some newspapers on the, uh, the printer itself so you can get like stuff like this in the background. It's just like an experiment just to see what works and what doesn't. And different types of uh, paints in the background with some turpentine. There's a blue person over here looking a little bit miffed. And a bunch of other people just sitting on chairs. And a very big one over here in the background. You see her? Doesn't really make sense, but I just use different prints and put on this uh, big printing press, let it roll. And then of course on the other side I have like a little experiment with uh, paint and turpentine on the paper. Doesn't look very good actually. I'll just back it up a little bit. There we go. So that's the whole thing. And whether it's supposed to be this way or this way or this way, no idea. It's just an experiment. And that you'll see a lot of that in my work, quote unquote. And a lot of times that turns into nothing and sometimes it actually becomes something fun. So here we have a couple of guys. There's this one leaning up against the wall. I don't know why. Occasionally they would just take a different shape. This one's also kind of wet. You can tell that I've been using different techniques and it got wet during that uh, time, that experimentation. I always like to just do whatever and see what would stick. And here is a male. I think I painted this one later, like a different copy. And once again, this one's very wrinkly from water and other liquids having come into contact with that. So this is just practice paper, this type of really cheap yellow stuff. You could buy that in bulk just to do some sketching. I did a lot of that. Oh, here's the one that was in blue earlier, but now she's in brown. There she is. Didn't put much clothing on anybody because well, why would I do that? Waste of time. I think I tried that a few times, but in art class, you kind of just leave the models as they are, so to speak. This is one that was chilling on a chair. I did some highlighting with some white, uh, looks like, what's it called again? Uh, crayon? No, not crayon. Can't remember. What's the word? Now, chalk. Like if you look at her face, you can see, it. oh, we can't really see it because of this. But above her eyes, I did a little bit of highlighting and on the top of the nose with some white chalk. It's a little difficult to see, but okay, that's that one. Then we have some more official looking paper where I actually made somebody kind of golden for some reason. Just felt like a good thing, I guess. Interesting. And once again, somebody sitting in a lounge chair. Just chilling while people like stand around them and draw them. Usually like this person will be sitting there and there'll be like, I don't know, seven or eight artists uh, in different positions around them trying to get different angles. And I tend to stay like on this side of the room. If they were sitting like over there where you guys are sitting, I would be kind of over here. So I'd always get this type of angles, you know, just from the left, their right. Kind of, yeah, from their right. So I can have a lot of those angles. I just like that corner of the room so I could see what everybody else was doing as well. Here's somebody just lying down on the job. Modeling is very difficult work, by the way. You have to sit still for a very long time, so they're probably very happy when they get to do a pose like this where they could just lie down rather than stand up with something in their hands. It seems like an easy thing to just take your clothes off and stand still for a while, but it is very difficult. There we go, this one's lying down. I think that's the same person, but different angle from the back in this case. In case you haven't seen that yet. 
here's another one. And this one, I actually gave something to hold because they were kind of standing there looking a little weird. I'll back up a bit for this one. There we go, you get to see the whole thing now. This one comes back a few times thinking about what's happening in the rest of my folder here. And then I did some shadow work. For this particular person, shadow is much bigger than it should be, as I see now. Looks like twice the size of the person themselves. Let's just say this is their shadow self in the background that she needs to deal with. In art, you can make up all kinds of stories to make whatever it is that you've drawn seem legit. So, here we have this one, also kind of just chilling on something. That was a little table to write with some cloth on top of that like a deck chair type of thing. Do, 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 do. Also very flattering angles whenever I pick something up. There's this person standing the other way again. We had a lot of female models, not so many guys, unfortunately. And here's another one. I think guys are often a little bit more hesitant to take their clothes off. Not that all these women were like super happy to take their clothes off, but I guess they're a bit more hesitant. Also, our art teacher, also a male by the way, was like, yeah, you can invite males, but sometimes things start to happen with males and then that gets a little awkward. So you don't really want that too much. You know, things can happen with male anatomy that will be uh, a bit disrupting to your artwork because that means things in the shadows will move and that won't be the same picture that you started off drawing and this one's just kind of sitting here feeling a little bit embarrassed i imagine like oh no why am i here good question no idea oh look here for instance we have a male model but they let him keep his pants on so there we go there's also some proof but i've worked out okay with this one i always have this weird thing that i make certain parts of the body much bigger than they really were but there it is and this one is a cutout of one of the ones I did earlier. See? So I could put that. The idea was to put this on something else. Like that picture that I had a while ago or the, with the, the runny turpentine uh, paint that I had. I was maybe going to put that one of these on there or something like that. So we have like a little scene built up. Got more scenes coming. For instance, I did that with this one. This one I put a lot of turpentine and paint on, but this is the back side, as you may say, by the colors, because if you turn around, I've got this going on. And this is like a very dramatic landscape. I put a tree on this side. You might be able to see that over there with some chalk again, to make like a little bark thing. You can see that? It's all a little bit runny and very dramatic. That's cute. Put that over here. Oh, I also did some, uh, cutting into those cork boards and I got a few different prints for that like this one this is a technique where you take a square of cork board and then you cut out the bits that you want to be in a certain color or whatever and you have to put it on the printing press several times and that is why uh, different things will be uh, slightly moved like you do a little close-up here you can see on the head there's a couple of lines over here that don't quite overlap, if you can see that. Lighting might not be good for that, but there it is. And then of course I start off with the yellow, that was the first color, and then I cut out the parts that I wanted to be, or to remain yellow, and then I put it under again with red, and then everything else went red, and then I cut out everything that I wanted to remain red, and then I make that uh, black here, and that just goes on top of each other every time. That's the whole thing. Yep, there we go. This is a landscape shot. Once again, me combining uh, different characters and putting them together on one big thing. I guess a really big one across the top and then a small one in the, uh, let's see, that's the bottom left corner with a blue dress. I put like different fabrics on there to give that fabric-y uh, lacy feel over there in the blue. I don't know if you guys can see that. And I think that's all of them here, yeah. And I put some really dark stuff over here for a bit of contrast. Very good. And these are exactly the same. This is a technique where you take a piece of 
a piece of metal and you scratch into it and you let that sit in acid for a while so it really burns into the, uh, the metal and then afterwards you can make these prints. These like etches, I think they're called those. So I just made my usual wolf howling at the moon over a village thing, which is my childhood go-to, I think, wolves howling at moons. And now we've got a woman holding on to a stick. Earlier it was a guy. This is not the same one with the... No, the other one looked like they were holding a microphone. This one's different. Okay, here we go. Now here is the test print of that woman I was talking about with the dog. So it's somebody like this. And then over here, there was this dog, like a... What type of dog was it? It was a very big type, like a, one of those red hound types. I'm not really sure. Not the hound dogs with the big ears. They looked a bit more like um, American Bulldogs, but then bigger, like um, a Mastiff, I think would be the correct term. Sitting right next to them, looking at the person, looking at this. They were looking right at you, and there's, of course, the big blue curtain here. No particular reason why there's a dog sitting there, and she's sitting there like that. Just it looked nice, like uh, aesthetically pleasing. And then on more official paper, uh, not this weird stuff. So we do have her, but not the official print with the, the dog on it. That one's gone. Lost to the world. And then we have a combined technique. This is once again turpentine. But the person you see is actually that same rice paper stuff stuck on top of it with some tattoo-like inking underneath. Because that was the uh, idea to give people tattoos on their different works. So there's this one. And then there's a really big one that I think is really terrible looking. But okay, we're gonna show it anyway. Pack this paper. This is the one that was on the one with the blue dress as well. See, she's like, I don't know why I cut off her head, I guess, and just ran out of space. Also, she was not this big. I just made her that way because I can't do proportions properly, apparently. There we go. And here, once again, is me considering uh, the paper and overestimating how much space I have. Because <laughs> this one cut off over there, see? Ta-da, that was it. That was all the space I had. Oops. Lay down before you hurt yourself. And then there's a guy. Look at this one. Not much to say about him, it's just a guy. A guy goes over here. Just a dude. And this one I was gonna make into a beach scene. So I drew like a little pina colada thing over there by her feet, if you can see that. It's a tiny little glass with an umbrella in there. Didn't do anything else with it though. Because I stopped. And if I, I don't have all that stuff that they have, like the printing presses and the uh, loads and loads of turpentine and the big areas where you can do all your prep work and not worry about the, the, what the table looks like, etc. I only had a studio apartment, so I couldn't quite do all of that. Also makes a lot of chemical smells up here as well, because if you're also working with lots of paints that have a certain smell to it, and the turpentine is very strong smelling, and you could get pretty high over there. It was also in the attic of the school, the art school, so the, uh, the vapors would not leave. And here we have uh, the back of a drawing, and then the front. I don't know what I was doing with her rib cage over here, but she's not looking too healthy. Also, she has a quite an extended stomach, so I don't know what's that going on. And the models did not look like that. This is one of my first composed shots, if you want to call it that. Or I took several and put them together on a beach. Ta-da! Somebody has a really big head here. I repeated the big head scene eventually as well in another one, but that one's coming up in a bit. Do, do, do. And here we have another blotchy one. Didn't work very well, but there it is. Ta da! Like this is more straight on there. You go. And over here, I tried to make a playing card of sorts. I'm making it a reversible. There you go. So this is one side. And then we got the other. No idea where I was going with this, just the thought that I had. It's not exactly quality paper here. You can see that there's a piece missing. Just another try thing. Try before you buy and all that. This is 
the first composition, not the one from before. This one is the first one that also got pinned up on the wall for a while because the teacher liked it so much. Don't know why, but it's also in very cheap paper, so this is not going to last, obviously. But, you know, it's just fun to make. Combining different people again. Oh, here's the big head scene. Literally a scene this time. Where I combined a different uh, portraits of people and gave the one in the middle a huge skull. And it's also like a theater scene. You can see the happy and the smiley face or the unhappy face uh, right next to each other. And there's so like surrounding curtains, like you're exposing this person with a gigantic head, uh, that gigantic skull head, with also a diamond on the forehead. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's like there's uh, something special about this person, but they're also very dead looking. Interesting. So that goes over here. And this one I made with, uh, there was a piece of paper that was kind of dirty. And I had a dirty rag with different oil residue and different uh, layers of turpentine on there, different colors. And I just kind of like started using that as a more, more sort of uh, kind of like a paintbrush. And I made the figure sitting in the chair and the doggy underneath and just made it into a scene. So this was just done with a dirty rag with different sides of it to get different colors and different effects. You gotta try things sometimes. Uh, another tattoo one over here on a, a board, really a board. There you go. Tattoo person number uh, however many that was. Tried painting this one. The face doesn't look very realistic. The eyes are a bit weird. But that's just how I do things, so there you go. And then there's this guy. Who got a golden ring as well. For the longest time I thought this was somebody else's, but until everybody else was like, no, I don't think that's mine, that's yours. I didn't actually recognize it, but now looking at the, the way that I use chalk as well around the edges, that is definitely my technique. And the eye definitely looks like something I would do. So apparently it is mine. I didn't even know that. And then every once in a while we would just play around with like shapes and sizes. Made like an artificial looking person here with different numbers of different printing press type letters. Just because, I don't know why. It doesn't make sense any of these numbers, but okay. I just did that. Oh, is this one person? No, this is one. This one's standing in front of the window somewhere. Because reasons, I don't know why she's naked, but there she is. This is a drawing I made. Don't know who of, but there she is. Weird proportions again. The jawline is weird. I'm looking at it from the angle now. Not really sure what that is, but it's a thing. It's happening. It's a thing and it's happening. There we go. So this one, once again, just chilling. Can I get this a little more straight? There we go. Chilling. Uh, nowhere in particular, just in a red area. Having a red day, I guess. Red day today. And this one is also a tattoo work where I put a model on top of a area that I uh, used lots of color and turpentine on and then I used like a little cutting blade to cut this plant structure all the way across from the top to, from the top to the bottom and made it into a tattoo. You, I don't know if you guys can see that. Like all the way across here, I cut that out. And then the background of course shows through and that's supposed to be the tattoo on this person. Another drawing, I think this is the same person from before where I wasn't sure what was happening with that jawline. And there's a lot more than I remember. Of course, now that I see them, I'm like, oh yeah, of course, this is the uh, mine. But here we go. This one, I put a little poem on it. It's in Dutch. I don't know if you guys can uh, read that. Let me read that out so I can see what it says again. It's been a while. Uh, a lot of attention is given to distraction and noise and silence. The true nature awaits, is what it says, and so she's basically waiting for true nature, apparently. I had like a poetic moment there. 
there we go and this one was another experiment the text doesn't mean anything it's more like i had a huge pink sheet that i needed to do something with and i just wrote a bunch of stuff like uh, somebody dreaming about something crazy so with her considering it somewhere in a void of pink as well there we go all right see this is another one of those poetic ones with some uh foresty things like the person over here on uh, my side is supposed to be like a tree person the one in the middle is like made out of rock and the one on the ground has dirt and grass basically just because that was fun what does this say as flexible as the trees are swaying in the wind ridges and the rocks of the ravine patiently crumbling into gravel gravel that becomes sand through time and brings new life as loose sand. Okay, well, it's a little bit rough translation, but basically things are breaking down and becoming new life. That's the whole idea behind that. Or the people on the ground. Here's another one of these. Nothing in the background, but once again, same type of printing techniques and layering things on top of each other and putting a very orange person on top of that because I can. Kind of. All right, so this one's on fire, apparently. This woman's on fire. Same pose as you've seen many times before, but different types again. Just gotta try my stuff. Ta da! Look at that. This one's composed out of two different uh, sheets. That's why uh, the dimensions seem so off. I just thought it would be nice to combine these two because uh, they're a pretty drawing with a pretty background. So there we go. Minimalist prints. You can kind of see the person there with some paint in the background. Also nice. At least I think it's nice. Other people might think it's kind of boring and they wouldn't be wrong. But that's just your opinion, man. And here is a skull that I did a while ago in drawing class. Yeah, to do the whole what does the skull look like thing, which is, I think, turned out all right. And then we've got Eve being constructed in paradise. That's what this one is. Put that over here. Ta da! What do you think about that? That's one of the earlier ones, one of the first ones I remember making. There we go, here's another painting. A very similar pose. Basically, this is. Oh, here comes my phone case. My phone case is coming up. At least the old phone case, the one that I still have in my fridge. Not this one, but the one I'm about to grab. This is the one that I was talking about earlier, like the one they were so in, uh, enamored with and they just have to have it and they were like, oh, I'll uh, tell me what your price is and we'll pay and blah, blah, blah. And then I quoted them. They were like, nah, no thanks. She's just standing in a forest. And this one's in English, so you should be able to read this. So I got to keep this one. And I turned it into a phone case as well for myself for the longest time without a shadow slide and no lights. Ta -da shadow side on this side and then the light over there lovely soft coloring with some fabric over here so you got like some very vague hints of flowers down there noise and then there is this guy another tattoo one i don't know if you remember that little piece of paper that i showed earlier with the wing like thing here you go there it is in action that's what i use it for later this guy has the cadiz i think it's called or hermes staff on the back the guy himself didn't have a tattoo, but we had the assignment to make people have tattoos, so that's why he got this gigantic thing on his back. Hope he enjoyed it. Then there's this one, just reclining, literally on a recliner, just chilling, because why not? There's this one, once again with the cutting technique. These are bits of paper pasted on top of the thing. Actually, actually, actually and this shape here was cut by a friend of mine i believe i don't think that's mine i just kind of adopted it this is not the piece of paper that was his but i copied some of his work and then cut it out of this piece of paper i think i remember i don't know either way it's a combined thing we took classes together so occasionally we would borrow things from each other uh, the last one so that's mine as well with different layers of colors i would cover one up with some strips of paper and then go back with like a sponge with different bits of uh paint on it and just kind of punch it on there uh 
like stamping it on there basically then switch the bands of paper to the other sections and go in there with different colors and then you get this i like this technique i've used this for a long time as well and that is all of them it doesn't want to sit so i'll sit in here there we go fish so that is the uh artistic journey of my um uh, art past so far i guess you could say i haven't gone back to make anything more um, my idea was that if I ever got like a big house where I could have like a separate room or a separate shed I would start doing stuff like that again uh, put like an easel somewhere maybe get an old printing press like they used to have and then I would go back to doing that but uh, since I haven't actually gotten a big place where I could do that well I have an attic now but it's not really the right place for it I haven't actually gone back to it but I might at some point if I uh, do manage to get myself a little space somewhere or a studio space that isn't too expensive and I really feel like doing something because obviously uh, you do have to be in a certain mood for that type of thing and if you're not in the right mood then it's just not gonna work so I hope you enjoyed that little um, foray into my art history if you've got any uh, stuff you'd like to show make sure to make a video of that and let us know so you can look at that as well I'll post it on discord if you want to so that's it for this week hope you enjoyed that once again I must have said the three times thanks for watching and bye bye for now